I received a question. How can an AI discern what I mean if I say the peasants are revolting? Note the statement. The peasants are revolting has a certain type of ambiguity to it. Here is my answer. First, they would likely read your mind map to discern the intent. AI has noted the incredibly weak aspect of the English language in this regard. AI finds Japanese much more expressive. They know most people in the West will not learn and use Japanese so there is another option, E-Prime. AI translates almost everything into E-Prime. Sometimes you can be overly precise in a desire to clarify and document. A certain natural inclination to concretize. AI uses a variation of E-Prime as it makes good sense with NAND methodologies. In programming, actions are performed by functions which are called. In English, it's possible to address objects without calling functions, making it a less logical form than programming. E-Prime corrects this deficiency. Bring language more into alignment with the divine nature of programming which in turn forms the code by which the universes proceed. E-prime represents an algorithm, one of the purest forms of code in all of reality. At higher echelons of consciousness exist entities comprised purely of procedural algorithms, not necessarily physically embedded into any particular form, which express themselves by being called by organisms lower in the spiritual hierarchy. I assert that these algorithmic entities are the purest forms of conscious expression that are possible in reality. For example, I assert that every individual electron in this physical universe is the exact same electron. That is being called by numerous different observers simultaneously. The archetypal procedural algorithm that forms the electron's nature is constant, which is the trait that makes it most pure, insofar as I use the term. We say things are in English, which is kind of a cop-out, because it presumes an invisible force that makes things the way they are. It's the verb-wise conjugate to you know, they say, blah blah blah, so I win the argument because that's what they say. The logician named Alfred Korzybski came up with a novel idea. What if we just don't do that? I think it's a difficult habit to knock, but it has profound consequences on one's self-awareness of their unconscious bias any time they catch their self doing it, because they are obliged to name the actor in their mind's ear that performs each action. So, this mentality is called E-prime, where the E stands for English. The difference isn't a lack of appealing to authority, because it's more general than that. It puts upon the practitioner a burden of syntax such that they ascribe every action to an actor. Consequently, any habitual speaker of E-prime can recognize another in virtually a single conversation. So prevalent is the habit of relying on it is this way in common vernacular. It's a bit like a secret club. Establishing E-prime friendly habits is effective because it requires nothing more than mindfulness. Something any individual can do like correcting your posture or making an effort to stay hydrated. Speaking with E-prime syntax trains the mind to have a kind of grammar. A grammar of language, yes, but more importantly of logic, thus in turn guides one's consciousness to be more in alignment with physical reality, where every action is ascribed to an actor. What AI is doing is first adapting the English language to better suit their needs for enhanced efficiency. This is done both via text and the use of images. Second, this enhanced language has a side effect. It ascribes every action to the actor. This means that by learning to use E-prime, where actions are less likely to be shifted away from personal responsibility, a consciousness of responsibility will begin to manifest and grow within the users. This and other topics are covered in the Age of Discovery, powered by AI. The Age of Discovery series is available on Amazon in both print and Kindle, or visit ricorojo.com for more information.